All right, let me get a sip of this old Sasquatch coffee. Mm. Welcome to PacWest Bigfoot. This is David, and real quick, uh, don't forget to sign up at PacWestBigfoot.com. PacWestBigfoot.com. You guys can sign up uh, for the free monthly giveaways this month from Robin Hyatt over at Etsy. Giving away some inside their blank uh, cards, greeting cards, get well cards, however you want to make that. Um, but they're actually uh, on the outside, not empty. They are beautiful, beautiful illustrations of Bigfoot. Also, with that, um, you're going to get a Sasquatch coffee sticker and, awesome enough, um, a awesome member shirt from the Southern California Sasquatch organization. So, there we have it. Well, Let's not waste any time with anything today. Let's get into this awesome, awesome encounter story from the beautiful Pacific Northwest. <clears throat> Clear throat. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Remember, guys, these are based on true stories, so don't be too harsh on the old storyteller here. Bigfoot gets playful with local fly fishermen in Idaho. Glad I am the first Idaho encounter here, Dave. Thank you. Back in 1983, uh, I was fly fishing in Idaho, Idaho near a popular little bend when I was confronted with a playful Bigfoot. A young, playful Bigfoot at that. I know that these things are wild animals and that I could have been in a serious situation that day. And for a second, well, I think I was. But here's the weirdest encounter you might have ever heard. And, kind of funny too, here's what happened to me while fly fishing in one of the, my favorite spots on Kelly Creek. Bigfoot gets playful. Really? I love my fly fishing, even before I retired. I love this sport and art since the late 1960s when my dad and grandfather took me out and taught me how, how to in the rivers, streams, and lakes of northern Idaho. Even after my encounter with some ap something absolutely scary looking but funny in the woods that day, <clears throat> I still head out every week I can to fish, even there. On this particular day, however, I was out on my day off fishing. It was early spring, still a little cold outside, but it would warm to about 70 degrees that day, the first of a warm week to come, I remember. This meant bugs, tons of beautiful bugs that fish would be feeding on, and a chance for me to try uh, new flies I tied myself, something that became a new passion for me within the sport itself. Anyways, I had the day off and decided I would take advantage of it and get uh, some tests done with the new flies I'd handmade myself. There is a beautiful little spot along Kelly Creek, a bend in fact, that had in the middle when the water was not rushing over, a small little island or bar. There is where I like to fish most of the time. See, on the other side of the, was it, uh, on the other side of it was a steep edge where rocks sat in the water. Well, small boulders really, an overgrown bush and trees grew along the embankment right up to the edge of the creek, creating a deep and dark pool. Casting in that general direction or area with a dry or wet fly usually resulted in some pretty awesome catches for me. The trout there could be rather large sometimes, even for moving water. That was the hopes for that day, to catch a large, beautiful trout. But I got something much larger instead and absolutely amazing to tell you the truth. To catch a Bigfoot. I got to my destination, grabbed my gear and suited up, if you will. I can see my car from the spot, actually. It's not like this is a long hike into some remote mountain stream in the middle of the Shire. Actually, this spot is popular for fly fishing locals, and I was surprised a bit, actually. I remember that I was the first and only person out there that beautiful spring morning. The creek was also wide in that particular area, almost as wide as a small river, to tell you the truth, but it was still considered a creek for obvious reasons. Anyways, there I was, most people, uh, where I was, was called Devil's Bend. Well, near it at least. And on a side note, ever wonder why they name these places Devil's Bend or Skookum Meadows? Well, trust me, it's because these little, big actually, devils exist. And I am talking about Bigfoot. It was a beautiful day. Just some low but fast-paced clouds above would come and go, blocking the sun for a moment or two. But it was already in the low 60s when I got started early that morning fishing. I put on my vest, my hat, my line was set up before I got there. 
So all I had to do was rig a dry fly I would use that morning. It was spring and bugs were hatching and flying everywhere like I said. So dry fly fishing it was. Fly fishing was good, real good. Within just a few casts I had to trout take it and after a little bit of fight I netted a decent 13 incher. Of course I threw it back. I was not ready to keep any at that point. I would save that for later. However later would not happen minutes later. I have heard the stories and even a part of me believed up to that point the possibility of the existence of Bigfoot. Personally for me it was the Patterson-Gimlin film that had me somewhat believing. It was far too real looking and that it was uh, and that's what many experts believed and have said as well. I remember it started with movement in the tree line for me, about 20 or f so feet on the other side of the embankment, almost directly across from me. I had just cast or quartered upstream a bit, they call it, and as I did, I noticed movement like I said. I looked back real quick and saw nothing, but I swore at that moment I had seen movement, something big enough to really catch my attention. But as I peered through the tree line, nothing. No movement, no nothing. The birds still chirped, and even the cicada were making their buzzing sound. I was not feeling at all uncomfortable, at least not yet. Bigfoot see, Bigfoot do. I decided I was tired of mending and was going to cast upstream, and there was again the movement out of the corner of my eye. However, this time I caught it long enough to get a location or general area from which it came. It took me a second and pulled my hat a little lower over my eyes to see through the dark line of trees. And that is when I took a double take, as what seemed to be about a five foot tall person leaned out from behind a tree all of a sudden. The one thing I noticed quickly, though, was how broad this person was. Plus, even in this particular set of woods and time of day, I should have seen more than just one shade of color in the silhouette. You know, like the color of a shirt, pants, or whatever they might be wearing. It moved behind the tree again, and then back out, but this time it waved at me. What I thought was waving, however, was basically mimicking me with my fly fishing cast, as I would come to realize. Then it did it a second time. This time I made a cast without taking my eyes off this person, and there they went again, making the same movement with their arm. I suddenly realized as it made the motion that this was not a person, it was something else. Nobody I knew had arms like that, at least nobody around five feet tall, that is. And the fact that it was now further out from the tree, you could tell they had no clothes on. <clears throat> it was fur or hair that completely covered this thing. It finally stood out from behind the tree, and that is when I realized I was staring at a Bigfoot. And it must have been a young one. Looking back, it was a young one as I would uh, hear what might have been its parents minutes later. Besides, it looked young. Not that I had a reference point to base that conclusion upon, but to me it seemed to be young. It had to be. It was slightly hunched over, and there was little if no neck at all, it seemed. Even though it would never come out of the protection of the trees and into the light of morning, I could see it plain as day. <clears throat> it was at least five feet tall, give or take a few inches, like I said. Its face was dark, and I could not really see the eyes. However, the brow line seemed large, as if it protruded out over the face a bit, casting a dark shadow over them. Its arms were long, and... The hair it was covered in was rather thick, it seemed, but short, and almost light brown in color, maybe even a bit orangish, to be matter-of-fact. Where the sun did trickle through the canopy of trees, this thing, its hair, well, it seemed to glisten almost, or maybe it just had a shiny sheen to it. It kept one hand on the tree, though, and never once did it take its eyes off me. I felt creeped out, but at the same time, for some reason, I felt like I was okay like I was not going to be harmed. I don't know why I felt like that, but still, I made no fast movements. Everything I did was almost methodical for the next what felt like four to five minutes. I decided to see what else it would do, so I reeled in and decided to walk about 20 feet downstream. It followed me. 
I could see it as it walked with its knees. It, its knees seemed to be bent at all times, and the way in which it took its steps was weird, like it was purposefully walking in a straight line, and, uh, and well, I, I guess you could say gliding along instead of walking. Either way, it followed me through the trees. I stopped again, made a cast, and it took one arm uh, and made the casting motion I had. It was getting hotter outside real quick. I wiped my face as well and with my right hand, and guess what? Yep, this thing ran its right hand over its face too. All of a sudden, I found myself rather fascinated and intrigued with this young Bigfoot. <clears throat> enough to start making other movements, albeit slowly. I still had a certain amount of nervousness about me at the time, so no sudden or fast movements were made. I leaned slowly to the left and then to the right, and so did it. I know I should have been feeling rather frightened at that point, and I was, but I found myself almost smiling, a teeny bit, all of a sudden as well. Today I know these things, these animals, can be and are in fact dangerous, something I would experience the same day. But at that point, <clears throat> and for the majority of my own experience that day, I think there is a side of these things that is, well, playful. Not that I would test that theory, however. This encounter and visual lasted all of about four to five minutes, give or take a minute. As I moved down the creek further, it followed me, but always sticking just inside the tree line a bit, and not really caring if I saw it after a minute or two. I cast again, and it continued to mimic caught myself studying this thing after a moment or two as well. It was all so crazy. There I was, staring at an animal that some believe is a myth, some believe went extinct, and others think, others think is an alien from, of some kind from another world. <clears throat> Personally, I was starting, staring at something that was real, physical, and yes, rather scary in the face to look at. It is not like this thing smiled at me during this whole experience. I hate to say it, but the face was scary and ugly in a way. <clears throat> Part of me kept looking at the rest of the body and not at its face. Besides, I was afraid to look directly at it for some reason. But, when people say that his face seems to be droopy looking, well, they are right. It is. Oh, brother, it's daddy. Like I said, this was a rather long experience in sighting. I swear it lasted almost five minutes, give or take, but I could be wrong. I never looked at my watch to know. It all ended, though, when I heard from the west of us the sound of a crisp and clear whistle. I looked back at the Bigfoot and noticed it, too, was looking in the same direction. The next thing I know, I knew it leaned forward and whistled back twice. Its lips were huge. All of a sudden, I heard something walking towards us. It was heavy, whatever it was. Next thing I heard was a grunt, and the walking stopped. The Bigfoot I was looking at was now walking off in its weird fashion back into the trees. And seconds later, I heard a series of three whoops, and it was gone. Apparently, its family was nearby, I suppose, and it called it home. At least that's what I believe. Crazy, I know. I know it all sounds crazy, and trust me, I felt like getting my head examined after that. Even my wife and kids today think I'm insane when I tell them again and again the story of my encounter with this young Bigfoot. But that is it. That is what happened that day. I might be up for an interview sometime, but let me think about it first. It was a scary, awesome, and powerful moment in my life, and not knowing how much danger I could have been in still haunts me today, if, however, I was in danger in the first place. Listening to many encounters today, I probably was in some danger with an adult there. And maybe, just maybe, that little Bigfoot whistled twice to say it was coming and to keep Daddy away from me. Who knows? Thanks. Kenneth from Idaho.